Hi, my name is Kelsey Morris, and I'm a member of the PBIS Applications Training Team. Today, I'm going to take you through a brief video overview of how to enter referral information into the Swiss application. You can see on my screen that I'm at the Referral Entry Workspace. I can easily get to the Referral Entry Workspace within the Swiss application by clicking the Add Referral icon in the icon navigation row. Here in the Referral Entry Workspace, I enter all the information from the paper copy of the referral into the Swiss application so that way I can begin to generate my reports and better analyze my data for decision making purposes. Today we're going to walk through how to enter a referral. I designate what referral type it was, either major or minor. I then select the student who was involved in the referral. I can either use the drop down menu and scroll up and down through the list of students, or I can use my keyboard with my computer and begin to type in the student's name. As I am typing, Swiss matches my keystrokes so that way it helps me identify the student more efficiently. If I'm noticing that in the list the student that I'm looking for is not represented, I can click the icon Not in List right above the drop down menu. Clicking that icon opens up the Add Student Workspace, so that way I can add in the new student and create a person record for them. Then I can begin to enter a referral for them. Since I've already identified the student I'm looking for, we're going to enter a referral for Brian Bender. Brian's in the third grade, and then I need to identify which staff member wrote the referral. Again, I can use the drop down menu and scroll up and down to find the staff member, or I can type into the workspace and more quickly identify who it is that I'm looking for. In this case, Frank Stenson. If I notice that the staff member I'm looking for isn't in the list, I could click the Not in List button. That opens up the Add Staff workspace so I could add in a new staff member and create a person record for them and then add them to this referral. So Brian received a major referral from Frank Stinson. I need to use the calendar feature here with date to identify what date the referral happened. In this case, Monday, September the 16th. I then identify what time the incident transpired, 12.45 p.m. Then I identify using these features of location, problem behavior, motivation, others involved, and action taken. These features help me identify more information pertinent to the referral. For location, the incident happened in the cafeteria. The problem behavior was disruption. You see that I now have a second and additional workspace and drop down menu to identify an additional problem behavior. In my school, we've set up our school settings so that way we can enter up to three. That means either just one, two, or three problem behaviors with every referral. The gold star will always designate what my primary problem behavior was. If there were additionals, for instance, in this case, there was disruption and there was disrespect, then I now have both problem behaviors reflected in the referral. If I needed to enter a third, I could do so here in this workspace. If for some reason I made a mistake and needed to remove a problem behavior, I could simply click the red X and remove it. For perceived motivation, I'm going to use the drop down menu and identify what the perceived motivation was, in this case, obtain peer attention. I'm going to identify who else was involved in this referral, his peers. And here with action taken, I'm going to use the drop down menu to identify what was the action taken or administrator's decision attached to this referral. In this case, time in office will be designated as the primary action taken. Again, in my school settings, we've established a system so we can enter up to three actions taken for every referral. That means we can enter just one, two, or three actions taken every time we're entering a referral. In this case, we have time in office, and we're also going to add parent contact. If I needed to add a third action taken, I could do so. Or if I needed to remove an action taken, 
clicking the red X removes it. But for this specific referral, I do want to have both of them reflected, time in office and parent contact. Here, with seclusion and restraint, I use the drop-down menu to identify whether or not seclusion, restraint, or both were used with this referral. Here in the notes section, I want to add any additional information that is not already reflected over here with the drop-down menus. So with this referral, I know that Brian was disruptive in the cafeteria trying to get his friend's attention. I might add in that he was playing with his food and growing his utensils. That's extra information that's important to this referral that's not already listed in the drop-down menu. Here with custom fields, I can designate more information that I want to keep record of and track based upon how I've set up my school settings. In our school, we've established the custom fields of parent contact and hallway. For parent contact, we notified the family through a phone message. And because the incident happened in the cafeteria and not in a hallway, I don't need to use the custom field of hallway to designate where it took place. Now I can either save this referral, or if there were more students involved with this referral, I can save and it will copy the majority of the information. If I save and copy, you can see that I still have some features of the referral left and all I need to do is add in the new student in question. That's a quick overview of how to enter referral information into Swiss.